Good afternoon, basketball fans. Welcome to another week of Dropping Dimes here on Collider. Uh, I am your host, Matt Nost, and I am joined by another basketball head, Mr. Mark Fernandez. How are you? What up, what up? Uh, so today's just is just like this is the, the, the second annual yeah. uh, all-star draft between the two of us. Yeah. I mean, we did this last year. We did this last year. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, I'll do the same thing that I did last year. I'll post our two lineups, our two rosters, and then have fans vote on who they think I scored <laughs> right. the better team. <laughs> right, right. Last year, did you get the better team? Uh, last year, I curb stomped you. I think there's that's really? the official definition. Damn, was it that bad? It was that bad. I don't know, man. i got to look that up. You, you go right up. ahead and All have right. the revisionist history. <laughs> right. And last year, I was LeBron, right? No, last year you chose to be Giannis because you said, I, I don't want to be LeBron. Right, and this year I'm choosing Giannis again for different reasons. Okay, all right. Well, whatever that reason is, I assumed it was still the, well, you know, I'd rather be Giannis than LeBron. No, for me, it's i got to rewrite history because I actually tuned in uh, for the draft. It's oh, like did you? The, I, I, I actually tuned in for it. And um, there's just something fun because for, for, for whatever reason, Giannis and LeBron are super casual, mellow, and like almost like authentic during this, you know, because it's kind of like it's a weird format. There's no bells and whistles. Yeah, it's just like the you know, it's just like um, the three guys from TNT. I think this year um, it was Kenny Smith, and um, I know Chuck was there, and Chuck, and, and more than likely Ernie, and Arnie was there. Yeah, it was just those three. Um, but LeBron and Giannis are always so mellow and relaxed during this, and yeah. they're like throwing little punches. You know, it, it really feels like being at the schoolyard. And having the two best players picking all of their friends. Well, the nice thing is, by choosing Giannis, he actually had a notebook as if they he had done research and right. written it all out <laughs> longhand or something. Right. And you could see it flash up in the screen because I, I just watched it after it aired. Yeah. I watched, you know, I watched it, but at the same time, I didn't see it live. Uh, but you're staying very true to character. So it's nice. It's method of you. Yeah. So look, because Giannis had the worst draft I've ever seen. I think yeah, I think last year's was actually worse. Worse than I mean, like this year he literally has like if these two teams were actually compiled rosters that would play competitive, real competitive basketball against each other, this is a blowout. I, well, the the interesting thing is, so each starting group is still divided by East and West. Giannis took all the East guys. For the, the most part, for the most part. The, I mean, he got Rudy Gobert, uh, Rudy Gobert. Well, I'm just there. saying, as far as the starters, right. the starters are still divided by their draft, even just by luck of the draw, I guess, or whatever. LeBron has all the West starters, and Giannis still took all the East starters. And that, in and of itself, I, I give full weight to LeBron, just because I, I like the West starters much more than I do the East. So, in our notes that you so diligently prepared, and, you know, and Matt really does prepare for this show heavily, this is the roster that he went with, right? Well, no, this is all available players. So we this have to draft available players. This yeah. is not how it ended up. No, no, no. This is not how it shook out. No. So basically, I just subdivided by east and west. Those are the top. We have to draft those first because those are the starters. Correct. And then below that are all the front court and back court players available. Okay. I, I put Ben Simmons in the back court, but he is, you know, a flex between the two. Uh, and at the same time, you know. Jimmy Jimmy Butler's listed in the front court, but in my head he's a two three hybrid. I think of him more as a two in my head, but he's listed as a small four. Right, and and um, in the reserves it doesn't matter. There is no minimum pick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just take whoever you want to at that point. There's like the voting and all that to get them in. That they had to. You can you can take X Y or Z, but you can't take you know all guards. In this, it makes no difference whatsoever. You can take whoever you want to. I think I honestly think they should just alleviate all that and just be like, make it best players available. All right, so look, I propose one thing. What? Because it sounds to me like you think you you uh, curb stop me. There is no thing. Let's. I can. <laughs> I will go back and find those. All right, but can we add some metrics to this? Can we actually say post All Star game, you'll do another tweet, and you'll actually put the points scored in the All Star game. By each player and see who Kim comes up with the most points. Okay, you want up? Uh, fine, fair enough. Fair All enough. Right. I will do a little extra homework on this and come back and then show you by numbers how bad I beat you. Fine, fine. But as long <laughs> as the world can see who wins, because one thing that Giannis might have been doing, okay, is picking players that could explode in the All Star game. Because while I don't agree, Trey Young should have been. I actually don't think Trey. Uh, look, I love Trey Young, but I don't know if he should have been a starter this year. I don't think he should have made the team. Okay, 
I don't know about the team. I think I mean the kids. The kids. Impressive. The kid's good. He is. But your team is the worst in basketball. Now they've creeped up to. Now they're in the discussion as to who's the worst. But right. when All Star voting was going on, it was clear cut. You're the worst team in basketball. You do not deserve an All Star. But he's not only did he get an All Star spot, he got a starter spot. Yeah. Well, that's thanks to the fans. I, I think if it had come down to the coaches, he wouldn't have gotten a spot. Yeah. So, but Giannis picked him on his team. Yeah. And look, he might be perfect for the All Star, right? Where, where nobody's playing defense. He doesn't play defense already. Could be. So he nobody plays defense, and he's a great. I mean, he's a marksman from the field. Yeah. Nobody plays defense until the end of the fourth quarter. So right. maybe he won't be on the floor at the end of the fourth quarter because he's not going to play any defense. Right. But my point is, as long as we understand that we're drafting for like almost like in a fantasy league for actual points that are going to be tallied team to team to determine the real winner of this mock draft that we're doing. Fine. That's fine. The right, instant fine. is going to be just a snap reaction poll. Who do you think on paper? Fine. Whose team is better? Yeah. And then post all-star. So I'll tally it uh, after the game yep. and put it out first thing on Monday morning. Who won? And we'll find out who won. Yes. That's do, all I Do ask. you want to have a gentleman's wager on top of this? Oh, I'd love a gentleman's wager on top of it. I, I don't know. I don't know cash? what it is. Should we do cash? Should, can we legally do that on air? I think so. Gambling's legal now. Is it in California? <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure. Yeah. What, what if we say, Where's Makuga when you need him? God. <laughs> what, what, what do we do a, um, a $5 bet? Okay, that seems pointless. Let's make it at least 20. 20? At least 20. I find fine, 20. $20 bet. There you $20 go. $20 bet. All right. we'll, see, we'll see who wins this thing. Who, all right, so now it's a real deal. So now we're actually competing. We got to figure out how do we get the most points. I'm always of- competing, baby. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, well, we'll tally. We'll see. What if it, I, I hope it comes down to like one point. You know what I mean? It's a real nail biter. We both all did right, well. So look, so, so now that we're actually playing for stakes and the, and the stakes, I put the stakes at five, you, t- you raise the stakes to 20. That means that the stakes are higher than I previously was anticipating, okay? <laughs> Which means that I don't. I now want to create who drafts first randomly. Well, I give you the choice. You can be Giannis or LeBron. LeBron gets first choice. Oh, you're giving me dibs. I told you that on the text. You had dibs last year as the host. I am gracious. So you can be LeBron and choose first, or you can be Giannis and you get first of so the reserves. Because you're the returning champ, I get a, a, a player's choice. Well, I, I gave you a first choice last year. So you can have first choice in the first round, in essence. Wow, wow. So do you want to be Giannis or do you want to be LeBron? And the, the only advantage is that LeBron picks first. In the first round. And then of the reserves, Giannis picks first. So of the available on that bottom second half of all those players, then Giannis gets to choose whoever in the world he wants from those first. And then we go through that jazz. All right, so I will. I'll stick to my guns. I'll. I'll, I'll be Giannis. Okay, so you're gonna take Giannis. Yeah, and I will take LeBron, which means I have the first pick. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give the rundown of who they drafted. So LeBron took Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, Luca Doncic, and James Harden. So once again, he took all the West guys. And then on his re- reserves, he's got Damian Lillard, Ben Simmons, Nikola Jokic, Jason Tatum, Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, and Demontis Sabonis. And then Team Giannis is himself, Joel Embiid, Pascal Siakam, Kemba Walker, Trey Young. And then he took Chris Middleton, his first pick in the second round. Bam Adebayo, Rudy Gobert, Jimmy Bam Butler, Bam. Kyle Lowry, Brandon Ingram, and Donovan Mitchell. Uh, I will say Team Giannis it can play some serious defense. That is for damn sure. Yeah, yeah, but we all know that that's not what this game is about. Not until the fourth that, quarter. That's not what's going to win those 20 bucks. Exactly. Uh, I mean, you know. I imagine Gobert is going to be going late for him, potentially Bam, Yeah, Demontis. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to pick my feelings, Bam or Jimmy Butler. Um, Total non sequitur, but I feel like the the Heat, since the big uh, trade, have actually not played as well. They're actually on a three-game losing skid. You know, it's up and down. It's up and down. It's a long season. You know, because they brought in Crowder, too. Yeah. I've never been a huge Crowder guy, even though sometimes he could heat up from 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 the, from the perimeter. But you got rid of Dion, right? Who might end up with the Lakers? Ironically, it, that's fine. I wouldn't touch him with a ten foot pole. Right, right. We got rid of Dion. We got rid of Justice Winslow. Yeah, who could be a good player? Um, Is that for, proper pron- pronunciation? It's not Justice. I just assumed it was Justice Winslow. I always thought it was Justice because it's spelled Justice. With the C. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Just, yeah, I don't know. I've always heard it as justice, but at the same time. It's, it is spelled just, just Justice. Justice, yeah. T-I-C-E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T-I-C-E. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. It's, it's conceivable. It's conceivable. It is. I mean, um, why is Far Far if it's F-A-V-R-E? It doesn't make, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right, right. But it's pronounced, you know, yeah, so yeah. who knows? All right, so look, um, so we know what, what they picked. 
um, and I'm ready to go here. I'm ready to compete. All right. Well, um, as LeBron, with my first choice, I am going to do the same as LeBron, and I am taking Anthony Davis with my first choice. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad you did that. I, uh, I have an assumption as to who you're taking beyond that. I'm going to – do you? Do you want to chime in? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Well, well, okay. Just, I, you know, whatever your thought process is, fine. If you want to talk to the people okay. through it. I'm going to try and and stick to winning the $20 trophy, okay? So sure. I'm going to do everything I can to win, okay? And right now, the metrics, the analytics, whatever you want to call it, doesn't lie. The leading scorer in the NBA is on the board. The number one scorer in the NBA is on the board. Points, wins, games. I'm going to go James Harden with my number one pick. All right, James Harden it is. Interesting. All right. Well, then, let's see. Available choices I have left are Embiid, Siakam, Walker, Trey Young, uh, Kawhi Leonard, and Luka Doncic. Now, Doncic may or may not play at this point. Oh, is he a little banged up? I didn't uh, know that. Uh, Yeah. um, As of right now, who knows? So, uh, just I guess if he ends up not playing and they have to get him a sub, then whoever drafts Doncic gets the sub. You know, I actually saw the other day that they signed Michael uh, uh, Gilchrist. Uh, yeah, he was released, and then, I don't know, they're still reeling from the loss of Powell, and yeah. they traded for Willie Cauley-Stein to hopefully show her up, but I think they were smart to not make huge moves at the trade. Yeah, deadline. I think Michael Kidd Gilchrist could could use a change of scenery. Yeah, sure. It could be interesting. I thought it was a good move. I thought it was a good move. I, I just found it interesting that everybody was salivating over Marvin Williams, who they also bought out. Like Marvin Williams has always been this boundless potential and get you 10 points right, on right. average or 12 points. I think his max is 14 to 15 in a season. Yeah. It's like it's not like he's blew the you know the doors off anything. Uh, all right. So, so of my availables, I think with my next choice, so Harden is off the board, I'm going to take Kawhi Leonard. Okay. Okay. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. Solid, I mean, solid I'm player. Really loving my team so far. Right, but – are you telling me Luca's injured to kind of throw me off, kind of like how they t- t- told everybody, the Dolphins told everybody that Marino had a cocaine problem so that nobody would draft him until the 26th pick? Or, or do you have actual news that Luca might not play in the All-Star game? So right now, um, so Luca is back, but they're, Dallas said they're okay with him playing in the All-Star game. So it looks like he's going to play in the All-Star game. But there are some reservations around him, so he might get light minutes, if if anything. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure because you know he's back, so it really comes down to how much he's going to play before and because in the All Star game, what's the max you're going to play? Twenty minutes max. Yeah, max. So I don't think it's really going to be. And, and ironically, sometimes the reserves get play more than the starters. Depends on yeah, and who's got the hot hand and whatever mix is going to yeah. be in there. They, I mean, him and Trey Young could be both guys that don't get as much run because they're so young. You know, to me, you know, like like one thing, just a little tangent here. Who do you think is your biggest snub that wasn't that didn't make the All Star roster? Because there's a guy that I'm looking for on this list, and I don't see his name. Why? Who do you want to see? I, Paul George, man. He PG. is. He yeah. is the All Star king. He's great at the All Star game. I just think it's it's he's missed so many games, and there's right. a lot of deserving candidates in the West. Uh, him, uh, Bradley Beal, hmm. even though his team is not that great, but if if Trey Young can make it. And Brandon Ingram can make it. Right. Why can't Bradley Beal? Bradley Beal's putting up monster numbers. So so, so is that your biggest snub, Bradley Beal? PG's another good one. Uh, Paul George, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. it just, he's missed a lot of games. Yeah, but he's played. He's very solid, quiet. He's, he's playing team basketball right yeah, now. Yeah, I agree. You know, you know? All right, so I'm up. Uh, I'm on the clock. Um, I am going to... I'm going to try to shore up my backcourt... Um, because that's where a lot of the points come from. And ironically enough, you're probably not going to like this pick. I am going to – God, the East uh, starters are not good. It's, um, it's, it's grim. It's grim, right? It's grim. I'm going to go oh – God, I can't believe I'm going to do this because, like, after the, the dissertation you just gave me. I'm going to go Trey Young. Trey Young. Trey Young is my number one. That's your okay. So as your as your point guard, yeah. Uh, so so my so my front court is Trey James and Giannis. All right. So during Tuesday's practice, Luca was upgraded to questionable or probable for tonight's game. 
Um, but he looks like he'll be back to back in the starting lineup. And then Dallas has said they will not hold him out of the All Star game. So, but my guess is he'll be on some sort of minutes restriction. Yeah, I mean, look, if your strategy was to scare me off, Luca, you did that. <laughs> you scared me off. Luka. Well, look, I, I, I am gonna. Because if he's on the board, it's like, wow, you should take him. I mean, dude, he's right now he's one of my favorite players in the NBA. Oh, hands down. Yeah, yeah, he's hands awesome. Down. He's great and, to watch. And I remember last year, I was on the Luka train for a while. Like, Luka is like, there's just there's something special about him. Oh, yeah. I've had uh, a few guests from last season that are on this year, and they're like, you were right about Luka. And they're like, dude, how, you can't dominate the world's second best league as an 18-year-old and not be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. impossible. Yeah, he is very good. He's very good. Yeah, at 18, you are head and shoulders above uh, the rest of your competition. Yeah. You're going to be pretty good in the NBA. And he's got the right attitude. He does. You know, he's got the right attitude like like that, you know, to be here for a long time. So, um, um, anyway, so you're you're on the clock. Yeah, I'm on the clock. I am concerned with the Luka because if it's a replacement player that has to play for oh, although they're talking about, you know, he he's if yeah. he's going to play tonight then he'll be good for the game and Dallas isn't going to hold him out but at the same time yeah. Dallas could have a little $20 makes us an actual interesting choice. It's yeah. not just uh, it's not just about who people think is good, it's about what's going to win you the trophy. Bitch him. All right, so I'm going to take Pascal Siakam. Ooh, another one of my favorite players, man. He's um we talked about him a lot and when we did our season preview or actually, I think we only did the East preview. Um, I was very high on Siakam, very high on the Raptors. And correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't they on a 17-game win streak right now? Uh, no, it's not 17. It's 15 last 15, year. right? Still impressive as all hell. Yeah, man. Like what? They're number two, like solid number two. Oh, in yeah, the yeah. They're yeah. Solid. It's them and then the C's right after that. Uh, yeah, 15-game win streak. Amazing. I mean, they're and, playing really good basketball. And the thing is, Boston is playing... You know, almost as good, but they can't make up any ground because Toronto just does not lose. Yeah. So uh, I saw this on first take, I think today or yesterday or something like that. They had a really interesting question I want to ask you. Do you think Kawhi would have a better chance, the way it is today, if he was on the Clippers or on the Raptors to win the championship? The way it is right now. It, I mean, the only real question is, is the what happened to the Bucks? actually emblematic of what's going to happen to them again this year in the playoffs? Because if they are the world beaters, right now their point differential is historic. Right. Uh, so if they are actually this good, then I would say the West. If the Bucks are legitimately, because then at least you got a puncher's chance with, because that Clippers team is solid, but the Raptors are playing, right now, be it, you know, they have two, three undrafted guys who are crushing for them night in, night out. I mean, they... Uh, most rosters, or most most rotations, rather, only go so deep. And, and Nick Nurse is like, we're rolling out every guy practically every night. Right. And everybody's getting playing time. And it just we're rotating around, and we switch everything, and we just have so many different moving parts and pieces. And it's really impressive to watch. Uh, if, if Milwaukee is legit, I would say the West. All right, but so pick one. Who do you think? <sighs> Milwaukee could be legit. They have no playoff. I mean, they have playoff experience, but, but they don't have the, the experience yeah. you need. I, I'll say the Clippers. Okay, I'll say the Clippers because they have the. I'd the Lakers the, are still their their biggest hurdle, but it's going to be tough no matter what. They, I mean, I say I say, the Raptors because I believe that the road to the playoffs is an easier road, less. Less getting, you know, less uh, less physical to get there because there's a way more competition and way more experience in the West, and you really only have to beat Milwaukee to to get there. Well, and I think Boston's legit too. Yeah. Outside of I that, Philly, I'm still not buying. Right. Uh, the Pacers have slipped. Uh, Miami, not entirely sure. Yeah, it, it's it's tough, especially the way they've been playing. It's I only mean, three games, but since I they won their last watch, game. Yeah. So that that's good, but yeah. they are five and five in their last ten. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. They've 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 gotten some bumps in the road. That's fine. They've but, gotten know, some like, bumps in the road. Yeah, but Tyler Harrow hasn't been playing. Right. Uh, he's now out of the skills competition. Yeah, he got hurt. He got hurt. I yeah. think he has like a, something wrong with his foot or something. So, yeah, so I think you're on the. Am I on the clock or you're you on the, the clock? I took I took Siakam. Oh, you took Pascal. All right. So let me. So your your yeah. choices now are Embiid. Kemba Walker, Luka Doncic. Yeah, so I'm going to go for who everybody's telling me is the most talented player in the NBA. And sometimes, like last night, for example, 
he dominated the Clippers. Did you see that game last night? I saw the uh, Clips box scores, read the breakdowns. Yeah, yeah, he dominated last night. And he was playing with a different attitude. Um, he was by far the best player on the field last night. Um, or, or or on the court. I, yeah. And, and it was impressive to watch. He was comfortable, calm, confident. I mean, he was, man, like, he's got... He, He's got a kind of like a weird shot from the outside where he doesn't get a lot of elevation. Still better than Simmons. Yeah, oh, a lot better. <laughs> he hit like three or four threes last night. I mean, he's got a really nice touch on the ball. He does. I just fear the problem is, as someone else pointed out, it was just a great summation of how I was feeling, is I don't mind him making the first one. It's the second one because now he's going to be prone to sitting out yeah, there. He, and he likes shooting from out there. Given his size, it's like you're losing that inter- inside, outside a little bit. But you do want stretch fives, but not a five but with le- his talent that's just going to sit on the outside. But last night, he also had a lot of fun in the paint. He had a gorgeous block. Yeah. Oh, oh the big block, but he also yeah. had some nice little baskets in the paint. Nice. All right. So I'm picking Joel Embiid because he's available, and now he's on my team and going to win me those 20 bucks. Embiid. All right. So then, do I want Kemba or do I want Luka? Oof, that's not, I mean, given the injury situation, that's not really a great choice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like somebody really wants this twenty dollars. <laughs> no, I mean, now that there's stakes, let's you know, let's do this for real. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna take a best available player, and I'm gonna take Luca. All right, all right, fair enough, fair enough. And roll with it, and hopefully he's not his minutes restriction aren't too too awful. All right, so I'm taking a slightly redundant player uh, by default with Kemba. Yeah. So that means that for me, Kemba, James Harden, and Trey Young are all going to be splitting minutes. Um, but I will take um, I will take uh, uh, Kemba, and I need to still grab a four. Well, you have first choice of the reserves. You got fours for days. Yeah. Whoever you'd like. Uh, you take a, and you know what? I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a clever little thing here, and I'm gonna put a guy who's not really a four, but he looks and it looks like a four, plays like a four, because he doesn't do a lot from the outside. Um, I'm gonna go. Just let me make sure that I'm right about this. You know what? I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm gonna stack. I'm gonna stack the. I'm gonna stack the backcourt again. I'm going Dame. Damn it! I'm going Dame. I really was hoping you would take yeah. a four, and I was like, sweet, I get yeah. Dame. I'm going Dame. The I'm hottest too player many in the league right now. Too many points. Exactly. If we're if we're talking about, you know. Winning the game. W- winning this. <laughs> yeah, I'm going Dame. Yeah, it was a, I, literally stewing in my head going, please, 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 <laughs> please take a four. Take a four. That's exactly what I want you to do right now. Lillard is on the board. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking uh, Damian Lillard. All right, so Lillard is off. I need to nix him from my list. Okay. Yeah, so it becomes a question of how much are they going to play? Yeah. How much are, like, some guys, the, the, the advantage with, like, a Trey Young or, or a Luka, but a Trey especially, is a lot of people felt that he shouldn't be there, so now maybe he's motivated to go to out score. and score. Because that's all he knows how to do. Exactly. He, doesn't know how, he can't do anything else except score, and he loves to score. All right, so... Under that logic, huh? All right, I want somebody. All right, I am taking Russell Westbrook. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a safe bet. Well, he seems to like to prove every All Star game that right. I'm the best out here. Right. He's won the all the MVP more than once. Yeah. He likes to score points. And even last year when he wasn't a starter, he came out there and just put up as many buckets as he could. Exactly. Every yeah. time he touches it, he is driving to throw down a massive dunk. Yeah. I'm going for the points. It does this little who's going to win does change up. Yeah, because I'm not exactly <laughs> stacking. Like I wouldn't take Westbrook this early if I'm trying to construct the best team possible. Right, right. But you're if, trying to win. Exactly. Who's gonna Who's gonna go off for the most points? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's a different metric. It's a different metric. All right. So that brings me up. I'm on the clock, um, and I am gonna shore up my 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 starting five, and I'm going to put Ben Simmons as my four. All right. Ben Simmons off the board. Interesting. Although the the Embiid Simmons playing on the same team might not work out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll figure out finally how to play with one another. Right. Uh, yeah, because did you see the 
uh, Embiid put something up. Uh, the the you know the you either die young or you live long enough to become a villain. Right, right. The uh, dark side. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, Butler posted. Jimmy Butler posted under that. I know a place that loves villains. And then Embiid, dude, I just got chills. At that. Exactly, that's and Miami. Embiid was like, "Not bad," kind that's, of. That's his Miami. Response. That's Miami. But then they came out and they beat the Clippers last night. This was, you know, I think uh, the best um, game they've played all year, in my opinion. I mean, it was the most complete game. But the problem with the Sixers is, so on the road they're nine and nineteen. Let me look. It's it up. crazy. Just it's one crazy. of the worst marks. And in I the think league. at home they've only lost two or something yeah. crazy like that. They're twenty-five and two on the, uh, at home and nine and nineteen on the road. It's unbelievable. Just if you're that yeah. bad on the road, you're not going to win in the playoffs. I think historically, it's the most disparaging uh, uh, swing between home and away ever. Yeah, it's got to be the greatest disparity between the two. There's no, there's no question. Yeah, All right, you're on the board. All right, I am on the board. Ben Simmons is off. Who do I think is going to score? Who do I think is going to score amongst these? Um. Hmm. It's also who do I think is actually going to get the playing time to do this? Yep. And because Giannis picked Bam Adebayo second. Yeah, I know second. It's like, what are you doing, dude? Like I, the guy. I mean, he's a great defender and he's a great rebounder for his limited size because he's not even that big. But you know, but but he's a feisty rebounder. But like that that doesn't play in the in the damn All Star game. No, not at all. Not at all. So uh, like his all around this, it's like why. Al Horford would get selected last or something like that. It's like, you are a glue guy and everybody loves you. But as far as the, the spectacle of the All-Star game, right. you don't really deliver on that yeah. whatsoever. People so barely even dribble in the All-Star game. All right, so I'm looking at the two teams as they're drafted, trying to basically help me figure out. All right, so I'm looking at the four and looking at what team has what where. You're, oh, you're cross-referencing the real team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to go, all right, well, who's going to get more playing right, time at that enough. position? Fair enough. So I'm going to take Brandon Ingram with my Good next pick. pick. Good pick. He's a scorer. He is, and Tatum has to deal with LeBron and Kawhi on his team. So Ingram doesn't really have that because he could be out there scoring buckets because they're short on the four. All right, so this is just what I would call a gluttonous pick. Because I don't need this player. But I'm going to take Donovan Mitchell. Solid pick. All right, let me mark yours. A lot of people are not giving any respect uh, to the Utah Jazz this year. People are barely even talking about them. Well, I mean, they were on a hell of a run, and then Mike Conley comes back, and they, you know, they're 5-5 five and five in their last 10. Yeah. But when Conley went out and they put Ingles into the starting lineup, they were lights out. He went. He was shooting like fifty-two yeah. percent from three for that duration of games. It was crazy. And then him and Ingles together shot like forty-two point seven over that. It was right. just bonkers between the two of them. All right. So Donovan Mitchell off the board. Let me take him off the other sheet. All right. We got a lot of front court individuals yeah. left. Yeah. I mean, you still got a couple scores out there. You do. All right. So I think I'm for my. Back up center, then. Ooh, I wanted this guy. But yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Nikola Jokic. Yeah, yeah, that's almost the guy I went with instead of Donovan. But I think Donovan might have more points in the box score at the end of the game. Even though Nikola could put up some points too. I just figure so on his actual team, he's the only center to back up AD. Right, and AD doesn't like to play so. Oh, they got Sabonis, but Sabonis is going to get so little minutes. Yeah, yeah. He was drafted last year. He will be one of the last ones drafted in this. All right, so I'm up. You are up. I'm on the clock. Who are you taking? All right, so I'm going to go for the hometown pick. Okay, smart. And, I, and I'm going to go Jimmy Butler. Smart. Jimmy Butler could have an excellent game. So far, I'm very envious of two of your reserve picks. Yeah. Yeah, Dollar... Uh, Dollar Dame is Dame. I yeah. seriously, I was like, please take a four, please take a four, please take a four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dame is going to go off because he's, you know, basically wanting to assert his dominance on the league. I love everything about it. I hope Portland gets back into the playoffs. Although CJ McCollum is having a terrible season, yeah, so I don't it has know been what's wrong with him. I don't know either. It's been all Dame, man. I mean, he's at. He looks a little skinnier. He looks like he lost some weight or something. Oh, uh, you think so? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks a little skinnier. 
It could be like, uh, oh, who was it? Oh, Kyrie, two years ago, switched to a vegan diet before the season, was doing vegan for the first, like, six weeks, two months. Yeah, he's, he's and it was like, I can't, I can't bounce back fast enough on this vegan diet, so he switched back. I, I don't know if he hybridized or something, but yeah. tried to go full vegan, lost a bunch of weight, slimmed down, but then didn't have the energy reserves for an 82-game I mean, season. How do you think uh, he feels when he sees Kemba and Trey as starters and, and no one's even considering him as a backup? Who, oh, Dame? No, no, Kyrie. Oh, Kyrie. Well, he's not playing, by and large. Yeah, he's not playing at all. The fans almost, I mean, the first returns on voting, he was going to make it. But yeah, did, didn't Taco Falls, like, like yeah, get the him second and, most votes or something? No, not second most, but he was in the top ten. I think he was, like, sixth or seventh for big men. Right, right, right. Alex Caruso was in the top ten for guards. Right, right, right. You know, it's the benefit of playing in larger markets. It's like the fans gave him the votes, but... but you need that coach's vote and that player vote to get in. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's only going to help you so much, yeah. Taco and Alex. I mean, Taco's on a two-way contract, for Christ's sakes. Right. There's no way he's making an all-star And he's playing G League, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, I think the contract allows him to play 10 games in the NBA, and the rest of the time has to be spent in the G League. So, you know, he's not exactly going to be getting a ton of run. All right, I think uh, you're on the clock, right? Uh, I am. Let's see. So, of the availables... Can I predict who the last pick is going to be? Go right ahead. Like, like Mr. Irrelevant? I, I, I got three choices. All right, I think it's going to be Chris Paul. Oh, okay. Well, that was not one of my three okay, choices. Okay, all right, fine, fine, fine. Then, you know, then no spoilers. I'm not trying to, like, you know. Influence, unduly <laughs> influence. Yeah. Um, He's having a good year, though. You gotta make He's having a great year. OKC is playing, playing basketball. Totally legit, and yeah. I think they did the right thing at the trade deadlines. Like, good for you. You do not need more, you know. You have a million draft picks. Yeah. So what's the point of getting rid of Gallinari to get yeah, more draft? Them. We you could have used them. But more draft picks, as evidenced by, like, look, the Celtics for had, have had a, a fucking cornucopia of draft picks for how long? Right. And what does that mean at the end of the day? Whereas you can prove to your fans, look, we lost Westbrook, we lost Paul George, but look, we're going to make the playoffs, and we still have all this draft capital behind us. There's no point in amassing more. Yeah, and look, and this, like, is there a comeback player of the year in uh, in basketball? Yeah. Well, comeback, uh, there's a most improved. Most improved? Because, look, right now, I mean, I'm thinking NFL, obviously. But if there were a comeback player of the year in basketball, right now you got to put Chris Paul on top of that list. Okay. You know, I mean, like, I did not expect OK. I thought OKC was going to be a bottom dweller. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. Just he would be disgruntled. But at the same time, now it looks like everybody really enjoys playing with him. He looks the happiest he's been since New Orleans. Yeah. Like, I, I can't remember him having this much of a smile on his face playing basketball. I was very cynical on Boston. Um, I thought Boston was not going to be good. I think I had him seventh or eighth in our predictions. I, I mean, or maybe not that low, but I had them low. And they've been much better than, than I thought. But to me, the most surprising team in the NBA, besides Memphis. because Memphis, Memphis is Memphis has been legit. Memphis is at eighth right now in the West. Yeah, and they've got a nice little comfortable, I mean, not crazy comfortable, but a slight comfortable yeah. lead over Trailblazers. Even uh, though the Pelicans trailblazers. Are, you know, are starting to c come up, right? But to me, OKC has been the surprise team of the NBA so far. I mean, they're they're legit playing good basketball. You know who's not been a surprise is Minnesota. I love that they started hot, and people are like, here it is, man, Wiggins. Wiggins it, turned it, Cats playing defense, and just it, like, it's, dude, now. Yeah, no. it's a disaster. They've Minnesota had, should actually get rid of that team. It's like this should liquidate that team, send it, send it somewhere else. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just don't think that D'Angelo yeah. Russell, so now you're putting a— uh, Move him to Seattle. Well, your backcourt in D'Angelo Russell can't play defense, and your frontcourt in Cat does not want to play defense. So what exactly yeah. are we doing here, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although yeah. they made the most threes, I do like the Malik Beasley pickup. And it makes Cap more interesting because now he's got three-point shooters, so he can just kick out to those dudes. Right. But at the same time, it's like uh, defense yeah. is still half of this game. I mean, look, Derrick Rose has been playing well. He has. You know? I like D. Rose. Yeah, but— wait. Even though he plays on Detroit. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. It's all right. He was there last yeah, year. Yeah, he was there last year. and But he has been playing well on Detroit because I've been seeing, like, his yeah. name— I was hoping he would get either cut or traded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. because I'd like to see him join a contender and then salvage. Yeah, he's been on a different team every friggin' season, huh? And I think he's shown enough to warrant a long-term contract. Not, you know, not a max deal or anything crazy like that, but he could definitely help a real yeah. legitimate contender. Because, um, uh, God, what's his name? Um, the guy, the uh, the four from the Clippers that went there. Uh, the red-headed guy. The four from the Clippers? You're talking about the... 
Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just blanking out now. The the whole Minnesota thing threw me off. Um, the the power forward from the Clippers who famously went to Detroit. Oh, injured, Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin. Okay, is he playing or is he still hurt? No, he's done for the season. He's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah see. And then Drummond is gone. And, uh, right, Drummond got sent to Atlanta. Right. No, he's in Cleveland. Cleveland, that's in right. A God, trade God, that God, made things wrong. no sense. I was like, I don't understand what's going on. Why would you do this? Either side. Especially because they didn't re-up him. He's just there to finish out his contract, which ends at the end of the year. Well, he's got a player option for $29 million next year. He'll be opting in to that $29 million. <laughs> right. Nobody is paying him uh, more than twenty nine, million. Unless, unless it's like a Harrison Barnes situation where he's got an understanding with the team. Hey, opt out and we'll sign you to a three-year deal where we'll give you $24 right. million a and, year. And Harrison is still with the Kings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that team is... Now they're talking about uh, potentially firing all the front office people and the coaches and coaching staff. V- Vladi finally getting yeah. yeah well, it's time. It's ind- indefensible to not take Doncic. Just yeah. absolutely indefensible. Now, especially two years in, just like uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like Darren Fox hasn't seemed to really have popped. Well, he was hurt for a chunk of the season. He's come back, but Buddy Hield is now disgruntled that he's not starting. Right. And they got a Bogdanovich problem. Of but Buddy Hield is not starting. No. He's, uh, no, that for the past little while, when they had a ton of injuries, he was starting, and then now he's disgruntled that he's not starting. Um, and Bogdanovich, unless if somebody comes in with a legitimate restricted free agent offer on him, they're not going to offer. Or they're they're not going to match. So it's just like you you wasted this money on sending Harrison Barnes, and you're going to let Bogdan Bogdanovich go, who's a killer and can shoot, and is exactly what your team needs because Harrison Barnes was the veteran leadership you were right. looking for. Right. Like, ah, I don't fucking know. Yeah. All right, so my pick, my choices are Bam Adebayo, Sabonis, Jason Tatum, Rudy Gobert, Chris Middleton, uh, Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry, and uh, you know what? I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shore up once again my four position. I'm going to take Jason Tatum. Yeah, yeah, that's a good pick. That's a good pick. You know, Jason plays a lot of three, though, right? Well, the three, four, that, that yeah. forward position. I'm just hoping that I, between him and Ingram, one of the two of them gets a bunch of minutes because they're separated by the two teams. And hopefully I can get those extra points. One of the two blows up. That's all I really need. It's like the fantasy football in the draft when you're going late. Like I only need specific, consistent production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah. these guys, and if one blows up, great. Jokic is off. Is off the. Is off. Is off the board. Yeah. So, we so you got, got Adebayo, Sabonis, Gobert, Middleton, Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry. Who's going to score the most points with those? <sighs> Who's going to be the big dog? You know what? I'm going to go Chris Middleton. Okay. It's a solid choice. Yeah, I'm going to go Chris Middleton because Giannis is going to give him a lot of minutes, whether he deserves them or not. Well, I don't I don't think Giannis has too much influence on who actually is playing. That should be the coaches, but. But you never, I mean, come on. Uh, you know, middle, like Middleton's been getting preferential treatment in the All-Star game for two years now. I think he was in the three-point contest last year. Yeah, the three-point contest this year is, is interesting. Is anybody big in it? Not really. Is my boy uh, number fifty five from the Heat in it? Uh, God, I forget his name right now. Anderson or Oh Robinson? Robinson. Yes, Robinson is in it. Yeah, yeah. He might take it. Dude. That guy's a marksman. All right, I'll tell you who's in it right now. So the Mountain Dew three point contest. All right, what? Why don't we give? Why don't we make this things more interesting? Okay, okay you want to up this? We, well, we, we got to pick a horse in this race. So we get. We get three points. We get we got a we got a th- we got three points, all right, added to our overall score. All right. So it's only like a three point shot. So it's not a lot, but it could be that thing that's sure. Okay. We got three points if we pick the winner of the three point contest, and three points if we pick the winner of the slam dunk contest. Fair enough. All right. Fair so enough. we'll do that after we finish the teams. Yeah, I'll pull up. I've got the three point contestant. So Dame is the biggest name. Him and Trey Young. Okay. Okay, that's, that's, that's an interesting contest. Now, uh, there's a lot of great shooters in it, but yeah. as far as name recognition, the average fan is, or the av- passive person that tunes in for All-Star Weekend is not going to know who. Okay, so it's going to be a tough one to pick the winner of, but if we, if we get the winner, we get three added points to our overall score. Yeah, but you never really know with three-point contests. It's all about right. who gets hot. And they've also added a, a more recessed shot. Uh, it two, it's like five feet behind the line at two oh, specific they? spots. And those shots are worth three points apiece. And they extended the clock from 60 seconds to 70 seconds. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right. So there's five players available. Adebayo, Sabonis, Gobert, Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry. Uh, 
I am going to take who you thought would go last, and I'm going to take Chris Paul. <laughs> right. Okay. Because in yeah. no world did I think Chris Paul would end up last. Yeah, have fun with that. Look, man, I'm looking for points, <laughs> right. and he's and looking to prove to the league that he deserves this All Star. He will bet. He uh, he will bet. He will he will score eight points in the All Star game if he's lucky, which is which is not, it's not terrible. Yeah, but this late in the draft. What, right, right. Eight points is good this late in the draft. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. asking for 35 points. Right, 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 right. Uh, all right. All right, so I'm up. I'm going to take um, – I'm going to just go with the hometown uh, guy, and I'm going to go Bam Bam. Okay. Who's not the best pick here, but I'm just going to go with the hometown guy. Well, I'm, uh, you know, it's a it's – a... And people are looking to feature him. Like, like I think he's like an up-and-coming star, and, and he'll get his minutes. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was, it was a bad pick. This was a this was, this is the pick that might have lost me the twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> if it hinged on that, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> then your team was shaky. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm trying to think. So who's gonna get the most run out of all these guys? So we got. All right, so I'm going to go Kyle Lowry. The Bulldog. In the hopes that he gets a little bit more playing time. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to go Rudy Gor- uh, Rudy Gobert. All right, Rudy Gobert for you. Yeah, I, my three choices for last selected were Bam, Rudy, and DeMontis Sabonis. Right, right, so you got them all right. You don't get extra points for that. I think Sabonis might have been the last player picked in the actual – uh, uh, Giannis uh, LeBron draft too. Well, he was yeah. He's he's the last on LeBron's team. Yeah, he's the last on Team LeBron. Yes, that makes him the last pick overall. All right. So my team in my front court. I'm I'm sorry. In my starters, I got Trey Young, um, James Harden, Kemba Walker, Giannis, and Embiid. And my backups, Ben Simmons, Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell, Jimmy Butler, Chris Middleton, Bam, and Rudy. I got I got some points. I would honestly Dame Lillard could swing this entire thing. Yeah, I got some points out He's, of it. Yeah, if I had to choose like who's the the dark horse MVP candidate, I would say Dame Lillard. Yeah. What's your team? Uh I got LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, Pascal Siakam, and Luka Doncic as my starters. My reserves are Russell Westbrook, Brandon Ingram, Nikola Jokic, Jason Tatum, Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry, and DeMontis Sabonis. Okay. It's, it's gonna be tough. All right, so I threw you off when I threw the twenty bucks in there. Well, it changes the <laughs> dynamic. You're now not just drafting like the most complete team. Right, right. You're right. like, okay, well who's gonna who's gonna win me twenty bucks? Exactly. Yeah. All right, so on the three-point competition, to close this out, we'll do that, yep. and we'll do the dunk after that. Yep. So three points. So here are your participants. All right. Davis Bertans for Washington, an excellent three-point shooter. Okay, I don't really know who that is, to be honest. But. A white guy that played on the Spurs last year. They never should have let him go. Okay. They let him go to free up room to sign Marcus Morris, who instead said F you and signed with the Knicks for some ungodly what, reason. What's his percentage on the year? Davis, um, hold on, I can tell you. Davis Bertans is shooting 42.5%. Okay, that's, le- that's legit. It's not bad. And then the next would be uh, Devontae Graham, who's shooting 37.2%. Okay. Uh, then we have, i got to look each one up individually, unfortunately. Joe Harris from the Nets. Defending champ. Shooting 40.8%. 40.8? Yep. Defending champ. So he's won it once, so he knows how it works. Uh, Buddy Heald at 38.7. Yeah, last year he didn't do so good in it. Yeah, some uh, some of these guys, are, you know, it's more about the flow of the game as opposed to being a set shooter. Uh, Zach Levine, 38.5%. Okay, he's a straight-up competitor, so, so, so he'll show he up. He is. Uh, Damian Lillard, 39.5%. Okay. Uh, let's see, your boy Duncan Robinson. Well, I think he's at 40, 40 plus. Yeah, 43.7. So far the highest. Yeah, and then finally Trey Young is at 37%. So your boy is the highest percentage-wise. <sighs> and we can say for the three-point, whoever ends up higher. 
So if we don't have either of the two winners, but your guy makes the finals, well, then you win this. Oh, okay. So 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 somebody's getting points no matter what. Yes. We can do it like that if you want. That sounds fair. It's fine with me. Right, to get a little bonus, right? So the guy you pick, if let's say I pick um, uh, uh, Robinson, mm-hmm. and he does better than whoever you pick, I still get those three points. Correct. Okay, so I'm going to go Robinson. All right, so you're going to take Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson, Miami Heat. I, I've taken three Miami Heat guys so far. Uh, Number 55 out of the Heat. All right, so of those available, who do I like? So Devontae Graham, no. Joe Harris is defending, and defending rarely wins back-to-back. Yes. It's really difficult to do. So but no. he's good. He is good. Buddy Heald, no. Zach Levine, I think, is more of in the rhythm of the game. And he's won, and since he's won the dunk contest, it could be kind of like a like a like a thing where he's really practicing. Yeah, and it could be. Uh, he wanted to make the All Star game because he felt he got snubbed. Which, look, get the Bulls to a better record, right? And then we'll talk as a Bulls fan. Right. Like, right I understand right. your frustration, but at the same time, you know we're battling technically for the eighth, but the team is terrible, just flat out terrible. Yeah. Although we've had a bunch of injuries, and you can chalk it up to some of that. Uh, so then him, it's Dame Lillard and Trey Young. So my and he's also, I mean, the All Star game is in Chicago. It is in Chicago. Yeah. But my the two choices I'm leaving to. So I liked Robinson, I like uh, Bertans, and I like Dame Lillard. So I think Dame Lillard might be out to prove that, like I am full on the best player here. That's why I liked him for your pick there. I think he's okay. He could be coming out with a vendetta against the league. So I I am going to choose Dame Lillard. Dame Lillard, okay. And All then right. for the dunk, you choose first because I chose first for the three point. All right, so now let me pull up the dunk contest roster. All right, you got four choices. Only four this year, huh? Yeah. Which, ah, I kind of like it. Limit the field, you know? Um, okay. There's no point in just making it too many dudes. Yeah. Pat Connaughton for the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay. Aaron Gordon for the Orlando Magic. Okay. Dwight Howard for the Los Angeles Lakers. And Derek Jones Jr. for the Miami Heat. Who won it uh, when he was on the Knicks, I believe. Uh, so... You know, if you want to make a run of Miami Heat, I will give you that option. I am going to choose Aaron Gordon, who yeah, should already yeah. have one under his belt. I know. That's, who's going to beat Aaron Gordon? Zach I, Levine's I the only guy that can beat Aaron Gordon. Exactly. And I, I wish Zach would have joined so then we could have basically a rubber match of arguably the best dunk contest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, look, I mean, Dominique, Michael Jordan, Spud Webb, nothing's no, going to beat that. It was great, but when you compare for, the, like, the the – Physicality and artistry of the dunks, the Gordon Levines. I agree. Gordon has to like, me. It's my second. Yeah, I Gordon mean, for had me, two dunks that I was like, yeah. that's that's bananas. Those those years where it was Jordan versus Wilkins. I I. So I was a kid, man. You were talking about somebody was you know practically crying when he right. won. <laughs> right, right, right. When he did right. that foul line dunk, I was running around right, you know in front right. of the TV. But after that, you definitely have Gordon Levine. Okay, and then after that. You have Superman. So since you took Levine. Oh, you want Dwight Howard? I mean. Yeah, I took Aaron Gordon. Since you took Gordon, I want to take Howard. Okay. After that, I would say VCs where he won. He did like he stuffed his arm into the. So wait a minute. Three of the four competitors have won before. Uh, Or have all four won. Pat Connaughton has not won. Okay. uh, Derek Derek Jones Jr. won. Aaron Gordon has won? Oh, maybe you're right. He didn't win. But he had such a good showing that it seems like he won. That to me was, yeah, they needed to keep going until one of them made like a terrible dunk. Yeah, yeah. Did he not win maybe? No, no, no. I think you're right. I think he just had that great showdown, but I don't think he won. Don't think so. Derek Jones Jr. did win. I think it was with the Knicks or somebody. Um, All right, but I'm going Dwight Howard. Going to White Howard, going the old man. Yeah, I'm going the old man because he's done it before and he's the guy who put the Superman cape on. So he's got that showmanship. Sure. A lot of the old uh, vets are going to be out there. He's had a great season, you know, even though he started off stronger than lately. It seems like he's been falling off a little bit. But honestly, he's played within his role, and that to me was the bigger success of he's willing to back up JaVale and close games and stuff like right. that. But but it seemed like he had more uh, game-changing plays in the first 
half of the season, like it seems like it's been tapering off a little bit. At yeah. least it's a look, long season. Yeah, and like, look, I don't watch every Laker game, but I was hearing his name nonstop for like those first, you know, four or five weeks, and it seems like it's been chilling out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the attention kind of goes to two individuals. So. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. So I took Aaron Gordon. You got Dwight Howard. And we'll do this one the same way. Whoever gets the furthest. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if both yeah. our guys are in the finals, then one of the two of us is going to get that extra three points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, with with, with the uh, both contests, it's pretty easy to see who's got the most points. So this will be easy to figure out. Yeah, and if neither of us guessed it, we I mean we had a one in four chance. That's pretty terrible. Yeah, <laughs> three point at least. It's you know it's going to be it's Aaron Gordon. If anything, it's kind of like the Oscars. They'll give it to Gordon for not giving it to him in the Levine year. Possibly. I mean, that was, you know, I think that should have been just a co-championship yeah. between the two of them. Look, basically, you got three points there. You pretty much guaranteed yourself three points. We'll see. Which we'll might see. make up for your questionable draft. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> okay. Outside of Dame Lillard, I am utterly fine with my team. Trey Young, James Harden, and Kemba. That's a lot. That's a lot of, and Donovan Mitchell, that's a lot of firepower. Yeah, except James Harden is used to just crab dribbling for 19 seconds. That doesn't happen in the All-Star game. Right. It, yeah, there is no dribbling in the All-Star game. It's Well, if it's, it's a scant amount. It's catch and so. shoot. It's catch and shoot the entire, catch and shoot and lay. Exactly. And, lay and throw alley-oops. And, and alley-oops and stuff like that. Uh, which he can do. Um, and I, if it really comes down to it, somehow we're tied, I guess we can go with the, the, our starters extra stats, so points, rebound, or rebounds, assist, or something. If we get locked into a tie, yeah. If we get it locked in, we will only go starters, right, or something like that. Because I don't need to compile the stats for all twenty-four guys, right, for right. a twenty-dollar <laughs> bet. <laughs> right. There is a limit to my time, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, we go the next most important stat. We have to. We should agree on what the next most important stat is. Well, in the All Star game, I would say I would say assist because who, you're you're tuning in for. See, Bob's. I would say it's a defensive stat ne- needs to be it. Even though defense doesn't really have, play a factor, the fact that somebody could put up defensive stats would be impressive. So I would say something like blocks um, or rebounds. Maybe not rebounds because there is no rebounding is just a crapshoot. It's just whoever's near the basket. Okay. No one's fighting for rebounds in the All-Star game is my point. But blocks, people might be fighting for blocks. Uh, what about the inverse? What about uh, uh, personal fouls knock score off? Because they don't get called all that much. So if you got to do that, just somehow got four fouls, like, dude, it's the All Star game. What are you doing? <sighs> I don't know about that. Okay, it's the All Star game, dude. I know there's not going to be a lot of fouls called. Right. So if, if this is in a if we're in a tie situation, right? If we're in a tie situation, look. I, I like the foul idea so so little that I'm willing to give you assists as the second most important stat. All right, fair enough. And then and then we'll put blocks as the third one. Okay, if it comes down to so what we're tied after assists, then we go to blocks. <laughs> yeah, we're tied after. Assists. Okay, if we're, we're tied, tied after assists. We go to blocks. Then I think we double this bet to forty dollars. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. because that's crazy <laughs> right. that we'd be tied after assists, and that's for only starters once again. And then we'll go to blocks. And it becomes uh, did Embiid or AD. Well, hold on, starters or 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 the whole team? No, nah, man, I'm not compiling assists for the entire fine, fine. team. But, but points is the whole team. Points is the whole team. In the case of a tie, in the case of a tie, assists for the starters. Assists for the starters, fine. fine. Uh, there we go. And then we got the extra, you know, three points, a uh, little, uh, you know, for the three point contest and for the dunk contest between the two right. of them. So we'd have to be tied after the three-point contest, the dunk contest, and the entire game. Exactly. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But if it does... And then if we're tied after assists, we'll go to blocks. And if we're tied <laughs> after blocks, we'll go to personal fouls. <laughs> All right, fine. It's a deal. And if at that point, then we're just rolling it over to right. next year. Right, right, right. I think we should just take the $20 and buy the world's shittiest little trophy, <laughs> and we just have the trophy to pass back and forth each year. Right. That's going to be fun. But now, see, now I have an actual reason to watch the game. Uh, well, I mean, I have a reason to watch the dunk contest. Uh, yeah. If it was going to be Gordon Levine, I would watch. Oh, of course. The three-point I like. The skills challenge, I don't care. I'm a big fan of the three-point contest. I've always been a fan of the three-point contest. Like, my favorite one, I don't know if you remember, I'm sure you remember this, but there was one year that Jordan, Pippen, and Bird all competed together in the three-point contest. I do not remember that. I don't know if Pippen was in it. Maybe Pippen did the 
dunk contest that year, and Jordan did the three-point contest. But there was definitely a year that Jordan and Bird went against each other in the three-point contest. Well, there's no way Bird is in the dunk contest. So No, no, no. I, I know. Yeah. In the three-point. Because Bird was like the three-point contest guy. Oh, he's got the best clip of all time where he shot. He still has his warm-ups on, and he shoots his final one. Before it goes in, he puts his hand up and starts walking off the court. And he, you know, he won with that. It's just like the cockiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bird is the best. Yeah, walk in the locker room and be like, which one of you guys is coming in second? Who, like, who's, who's the modern-day Bird? Who's the cockiest, meanest son of a bitch out there right now? It's like Bird. I mean, I, I guess the closest comp would be Westbrook. But yeah. Westbrook is more Kobe to me. Right, right. And, like, I don't think Westbrook's starting fights the way that Bird did. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, right, I could right. easily see Westbrook starting a fight with his own team. Yeah, yeah, fans, you're right. You're right. You're right. The other you're team. Right, you're right. Uh, but who has the drive like Bird like that? I don't know. That's a that's yeah. an interesting question. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of comps these days to Bird. No, he was a special guy. He was a special guy. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, there we go. There are yeah. two teams, um, and we'll I'll, I'll tweet out after this goes up live. Cool. I'll put up uh, our two teams, and then the fans can vote on that. Yeah. We're going by who scores the most points, once again, as you're hearing this. So yeah. f- find me on Twitter at Matt Nost and find him at Mark Fernandez. Yep. And you can find the uh, the, our, uh, the listing of our two teams plus the poll that's up there. I'll do it in a tweet thread. And, uh, you know, make your voice heard. I think this year is much, much closer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even though under, under the same rules, it would be interesting to go back to last year and determine who the actual winner was of that one. I I mean I may have that Google Doc. I am looking for it now. Where that would be. Yeah, but anyway, uh, this is look. I mean, we're trying to wrap up the show. Yeah, I know this. <laughs> I got to go back a year of Google Docs. This this could take a while. Yeah, uh, it's just something interesting. It, it, like if if anybody actually gets into this, it would be interesting to know under the same guidelines that we've determined here today, who would have won last year? Might be this one? No. No. All right. Well, maybe I can find it. Maybe I can't. I don't know. <laughs> right. I, 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 I use Google Docs a lot, and there's yeah. a lot to choose from. So, uh, all right. Well, there you go. You can, uh, you can find the two of us on uh, Twitter. Yep. Uh, anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Nothing at all, man. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to Drop of Dimes this week. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the feed of your choice. Let us know the feedback. Can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about the uh, the team uh, arrangements that we have going here. And, uh, I think you might be on this camera. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I keep playing to that one because I'm used to. Yeah, we're upgrading the studio here, guys, so bear with us. We're, we're going to get it right. But uh, I, think, I think you're on this camera. Yeah, I am. I, I utterly forgot. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, thank you uh, so much for tuning in this week. Subscribe to the feed of your choice. Let us uh, Give us the feedback, uh, what you uh, think on Twitter. And uh, I guess check back in with us on Monday yeah. to find out who actually won this whole thing and who's taking home that sweet, sweet $20. Ooh, $20, baby. Uh, that is it for this week. Adios.